Hey everybody, this is Diesel VFX, and today we're going to take a look at Microstock Plus. Now, this is a service that I tried a while ago and that I didn't really like, but I gave it a couple more chances, and now I have completely fallen in love with it. I discovered that I was doing a couple things wrong, so I thought I'd make a video on how to do it. So let's go ahead and dive in. What is Microstock Plus? So Microstock Plus is a service where you produce stock footage and then you submit it to Microstock Plus and then Microstock Plus will then submit it with the data to all the different stock agencies that you have signed up for. So you can see on here that I have 11 different active agencies. And that means that I will, instead of uploading it 11 times to 11 different agencies and inputting the data 11 times, instead I will do it once and then this will submit it to those 11. 11 agencies. Uh, right below that, it says that I have 200 gigs and I'm using zero of it. So that means 200 at a time. So that means that you can upload 200 gigabytes of footage, send it off to the 11 agencies. Then once it's done, there's no reason to keep it, delete it, and then start over at 200. First thing you're going to want to do is go to manage agencies. And here's a gigantic list of all the available stock agencies. The top 11 are the ones that I am currently signed up for and that I have connected to this service. And then there is a ton more. And even if you don't want to use Microstock Plus, it is a really cool resource just to figure out what stock agencies are out there. So for example, when you click on press photo, it gives you a couple warnings at the top, but this one is most important. This agency doesn't accept new content any longer. Okay, well, thank you. Now I know that I should not worry about pressphoto.russia. That is not something that I want to do. But then also down here, it shows you what they actually accept. So they accept photos, images, and videos. So if I click on a random one like this one, oh, they do not accept videos. Now I'm going to go through this for video and not photo, but if you're a photo submitter, this is also great because it shows you what stock sites you can submit your photos to. It even has YouTube as an option if you want to submit your stuff and uh, get it uploaded to YouTube. So once you get all of the information signed up, then you just put in all your information, your login, things like that, and then uh, it syncs it up and then you get a green check mark. So I currently have 11 agencies synced up. So a side note for people who are on iStock or Getty, um, it has an extra thing, API key and API secret. So I contacted them and I'm like, I can't find what those are and how to get them. And they said, it's a third party company. So I went to them and then I asked them, how do I get my API key and API secret? And they said, contact a salesperson. Uh, no link, no, here's a salesperson, just find a salesperson. Thanks. So helpful. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go to upload files because now that I have all my stock agencies set up, I'm ready to go. So you go to upload files and there is a way to upload them directly. So you can either drag and drop your stuff right here, or you can use any of your usual FTP servers. So if you are a stock footage user, then you're probably familiar with FileZilla. And if you're not, this is a great way to submit stock footage because of this little button right here. This little button allows you to create presets. So now instead of having to type in all this information each time, I can actually just click on the down arrow click on Microstock Plus, and I can just drag and drop my stuff here or there, depending on which one you prefer. So today we're going to go ahead and look at some animations and some things that I'm going to send off to these agencies. So the first one is like a little animated troll that I created. I actually just thought of him, drew him and animated him all in one day. That was kind of fun. And then these little like censored bars so you can bleep people out. So I'm going to take my content and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag and drop it and go ahead and upload it right here. So let's see how long this takes. 13 minutes later. All right. So about 20 gigabytes took about a half hour and that's usual for my, uh, my internet connection at my apartment. So they are all uploaded. They're all ready to go. So let's go ahead and click on my files to go take a look at them. And we have all of our clips and a pink line under all of them. So what happens is when you click on them and you can edit them, you can copy and paste, and then you can zoom in. So when you edit, it's just like any other stock agency where it plays it and then it shows you all the information. Now there's more information than usual, and that's because it's all the information for all the stock agencies, including being able to put in your price and any other custom data that goes to the different stock agencies. So you put it all in here and then you can copy the entire thing and paste it onto multiple clips which is what we're going to do. Because they're just variations on an animation, I kept the description and the keywords the exact same. So I actually keep a spreadsheet. We have our information. Let's go ahead and copy and paste it into these clips and get them ready to send off. 
So as you can see, I did not put the title in and then I copy and pasted it on every single one. Then I'm opening every single one and then I'm just simply copying and pasting the title into the title space and hitting save. Now you might notice that that little pink line turned into orange and orange over here as you can see, it means that it's ready to be submitted off, but some of them still have pink underneath. So what happens if I click on this? Oh, it says not ready. The MOV file is too large. So can stock photo take stuff under um, like two gigabytes, I think, is their limit. So this cannot be sent off to can stock photo. This is a ProRes 422 4K uh, 30 second animation. So it cannot go to that agency. And I'm guessing this is the same thing. Oh, um, description has bad characters. In my description, I put uh, also available in all bleep or bleeped words. So it doesn't let you put these characters in the description for some reason. So we're just going to have to fix this. So I'm just going to fix it on every single one. See you in a sec. Now there's still pink on a couple of these. So not ready, the video is too long, and not ready, the video is too long. So uh, the reason why these two are too long is that um, clips are usually 30 seconds, except when it has an alpha mat, you can put an additional 30 seconds, which is the alpha mat after. So I have a version with a white background that is an alpha matted, or I have a version of it just on green screen that's 30 seconds. So it looks like Pixta and Clip Dealer do not take the minute long alpha mat layered versions. So it will not be sent off to those two stock agencies, but that's fine. I'm not going to go back and fix clips just for them or just for some of these little stock agencies. So I'm just going to allow all this stuff to be sent off and some of it won't make it to certain uh, stock agencies that don't support it. I guess the question is, should you even bother with it? Because some of these little stock agency like Dreams Time and Deposit Photos, like I only make like $100, $200, $300 a year. But you know what? That's $100, $200 to $300 a year. And all I have to do is just click this. So why the hell not? And I'm at the point to where I am ready to send these off to the stock agencies. So how do I do that? And what does that look like? So some of these, you might not want to send it off to all the different stock agencies. You might just want to send it off to only Shutterstock or only uh, Adobe Stock. So you just select those two and then you just hit upload and submit. Or you can hit select all and then submit it to absolutely everything and it will just skip over the ones that are not accepted. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hit go. Confirm. Do you really want to submit it? Yes. Then it will take a few minutes and then it will start just slowly uploading each one of these to the different stock sites. You don't have to keep this tab open. Once you hit upload selected, you can just close the tab and walk away and then um, your computer isn't doing anything, the MicroStock Plus server is. Now comes the part where we need to have a little talk about the bugs and about the problems that are with this site and that is that I screwed up. I made a mistake. <laughs> so what I was doing the first couple times that I worked with MicroStock Plus is I was excited to see them uploading and I actually went to the stock sites, I clicked on them and I opened the upload tabs because I wanted to see the files showing up and I wanted to see what was going on and I would click on them and I had no idea that what I was doing is I was actually disrupting the process. So it sent the clips and uploaded them, but none of the information. So back when I did that, I was like, well, what the heck is the point of MicroStock Plus if it doesn't even send the information along with the clips? But it was my fault. I got involved. I messed it up. So when it's uploading and when you're sitting here, do not go to the stock agencies. Do not open your uploads tabs on any of them. Don't go to Pond5. Don't go to Shutterstock. Don't look at them. You have to be patient and you have to sit here and you have to let the process do its thing. And it will probably actually take a really long time, but you don't have to do anything. You're done for the day. You just have to walk away, except every couple hours, you might want to come back and just take a look, just see what's going on. Because like already, while I was talking, one of them got fully uploaded to Pond5. Um, oh, two got uploaded to Pond5. But sometimes there are errors and there are problems. Like, for example, last time I did this Shutterstock, randomly it said um, there's a login error and that it had a two hour long countdown or something until it was going to try again. And then it didn't work again and it didn't work again. So it was having trouble connecting my uh, my Shutterstock profile for some reason. So I was like, hmm. So what I ended up doing is I just selected the clips that it said are on hold 
from uploading back to queued, which basically is like do not upload. And then I submit resubmitted them to Shutterstock and then it worked perfectly again. So sometimes you might have to just turn it off and turn it back on again for one of the agencies and then it will work just fine. I was having issues with motion elements because even though they were uploading successfully, uh, none of them were actually making it to my profile. But so then I just went to my FileZilla and then I just sent them directly for, through the FTP. And again, they didn't make it to my profile. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? So then I just went straight to Motion Elements and then I uploaded them directly using their uploader. And then they immediately made it to my profile. So something was broken on the Motion Elements FTP. That's not the fault of Microstock Plus. That's just something's going on with the Motion Elements site. So it's important not to get angry at this because something weird is going on on the other side of the equation. All right, so it is the next day and I am back to take a look at what happened overnight. So uh, on first examination, there's a lot of rainbow going on here, and that's not good. I was hoping for a solid dark green line, and that's not what we have. So let's go through and see what happened when I let this go overnight. Shutterstock, uh, it rejected most of them, and it even tells you why they're rejected. So let's go to Shutterstock and see what happened. OK, so visible trademark. Um, yeah, I put a bite out of that apple, so that's parody. Like they really were not supposed to reject it for that. And none of the other stock sites had a problem with it. So they all look like they all have this wait noise and artifacts on this one. But these it's the same render. It's ProRes 422 out of After Effects. There's no noise and artifacts. What are you talking about? So in the beeps, I left in the tone like this. So there is a reason why I left in the beep, because when the do you think the are going to use the beep, you pieces of So I guess let's go ahead and talk about Shutterstock real quick because I shouldn't even really be uploading to Shutterstock. If you haven't heard, they changed their entire contributor program to where instead of earning 30% of your sales, you only earn 15% of the sales and then you have to work your way up. But then every January, it starts over at 15% again. So they completely screwed over the contributors and are just stealing your money. And it is absolutely disgusting. And on top of that, their review process is absolutely disgusting as well, where I, I talked to other people in the community and it turns out that Shutterstock is using bots to review content and not real people. So as a result, what's happening because they're using bots is stuff like this. I created animated uh, pills a while ago and each one had a completely different reason why it was rejected. Uh, frame rate and shutter speed, editing, keywords, noise and artifacts, they're all the same type of render in all the same settings. So if one has this problem, they all should have this problem, especially keywords, because I copy and pasted them with each. Other people are having these issues as well. Like this person had these two still photos of a sunset and it got rejected due to legal compliance restrictions. Like there's something copyrighted in there. No, there's not. It's a fucking sunset. You like, what are you doing? Like, there's no reason to reject that for that reason. And then this person got this one rejected for nudity. It's a still photo like nudity. Look at that. Is she nude? No, she absolutely isn't. So Shutterstock three years ago was one of the best stock sites. But now um, hashtag boycott Shutterstock. Like it's a massive movement. No, like no Shutterstock. No, I think this company is going to be in serious trouble at the beginning of next year when they actually start everybody back off at 15%. I think a lot of important people are going to disable their profile. I'm going to be one of them. Then Adobe stock, it got submitted, but not approved yet. Uh, Dreams time, it says approved. So that's pretty cool. Uh, submitted. Okay. Can stock photo. Um, it looks like uh, Levin got approved. They still need to look at one. All right. Pond 5 submitted. Uh, Color Box submitted. Um, Pixta submitted. So now I had mentioned with Motion Elements that they were having server problems and three of them never got uploaded. And it's the same exact three that couldn't make it to Canstock because it's over 2.2 gigs. So something's going on with their FTP and it's not accepting files over two gigabytes. So what I did is I went to um, their actual upload interface and just did it directly without an FTP server. And it looks like they made it fine here. So there is kind of an issue with FTP servers, not just Microstock Plus, but other FTP entities where if it's over two gigabytes, it starts to become problematic. So maybe in the future, instead of 30 second animations, I need to do 20 or 25 second animations to get them all under the, uh, the two gig limit because I'm having some issues in regards to file size. 
And the last one is Yay Images. Now that one didn't work initially, and it's because under their under the username I put at gmail.com and it it needed the username without any. But this one is a lot slower than the rest. And that's something else you'll notice if you end up watching it, is that some of these sites like Pond5 or even Dreams Time and Deposit Photos, they'll just go immediately, right away. But then some of these other ones take like all day. And it's because different FTP servers and different um, companies have different speeds. So that's why it will seem kind of uneven. So next, let's go ahead and talk about some of the features and some of the things that you would pay for to expand on this site. Because right now, uh, the free version allows you to submit something like 30, I think, 33 clips a month. And then every month that resets. Uh, it also gives you 200 gigabytes and you do not get any like trending information. But what if you need more space? What if you need more clips per month? Well, here's what you do. So up here, there's a little plus sign next to the 200 gigs. And it basically tells you that what you need to do is you need to click on this down here to uh, talk to a chat guy, this little thing in the very bottom corner. And then you can order more space. So you can get uh, one terabyte is uh, 10 euros a month but you can order probably 10, 20 terabytes if you want to pay more per month. For me, I don't see, I, I, I don't think I'm ever really going to have over 200 gigabytes at a time. And then I'm just going to delete it all and start over again. So I don't think that's a service that I need. Then you have the trends. So I'm going to, I'm going to open this in a new tab. So uh, here pricing. So you have three different ones and uh, your trends over the last year or six months and all these different options here. So you can pay three up to 30 euros a month to get all of your data for like, you know, what clips are selling better, what clips are not selling and uh, all that kind of uh, laid out in front for you. So this is kind of neat. Um, I actually keep track of this on my own, so I actually do not need this. So that's not a service that I'm going to be looking into. So that took a bit to find, but so Microstock Plus is part of Stock Submitter. And yeah, so you get three, 33 submissions a month for free, which me, I'm not that heavy of a user and I usually create about 33 a month. So that's actually great for me and it is free. So I'm going to go with that. So your starter is only about 3.33 euros a month for 100 submissions a month. Now that is more up my alley. I think that is exactly what I'm going to be going for. Um, then there's light, 250 submissions a month, casual 400, 1,000, and then infinite. So this is how much it costs if you want to submit more per month. So now let's go ahead and talk about the pluses and the negatives for this. So even though it's not perfect, it changes it from like, you know, a couple days worth of data entry to just like an hour or, or less. So I think that even though it might be a little buggy, it might have a couple problems. Oh, there we go. See, here's Shutterstock's weird invalid thing. So I'll have to fix that. But even though it does things like this every once in a while, and it might be a pain in the butt, it might not be perfect. I mean, think about what it's doing. It's it's communicating with 11 different FTP servers all at the same time and submitting stuff. So it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to work flawlessly. It will have errors all over the place, but still it's significantly cutting down the amount of time and effort that I have to do this every time I make stock clips. Considering that, you know, a user like me, it's only going to be free or like just, you know, very, very cheap to use. I, I think that this is an extremely good option and I'm, I'm a fan of it so far. And I think that once they keep working out some of the errors and they keep fixing some of these things, I think that this is going to be absolutely fantastic for different stock footage users, especially if you're working on images, because I have 11 agencies here. But if you're a photographer and you're doing stills like you can submit to like what, like something like 20 to 30 stock agencies all at once, only putting in data once like for you guys, this is going to be huge. This is going to be gigantic for you. So I would definitely use this if you're a stock photographer. So I hope that this little uh, review uh, was helpful and I hope that you guys have fun and happy creating and happy uploading.